Hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about February 17th, um, the Friday. I believe it is a Friday yet. <laughs> it's been a long week. Um, Friday, February 17th, um, League of Legends DFS Slate. Um, it's another four games late. You know, I've been grinding out these videos this week. So I hope you guys, um, uh, you know, hope, hope these videos have benefited you over the last several days. Um, I know yesterday I had a pretty good day, um, taking a good stance on firm stance on LNG winning. So I had a lot of LNG. I think I had, I think, uh, 100% exposure to LNG in some sort of fashion uh, in every single one of my lineups. And that, that really worked out really well. Ended up being very chalky with LNG and RNG overall with maybe some one-offs, you know, one-offs with Doran from Genji and the top lane and stuff like that. But nonetheless, if you had LNG in most of your lineups like myself, um, you know, you would have profited. So I hope it worked out. So yeah, let's keep continue. Let's continue, um, you know, the hot streak, and hopefully, you know, we can come up, uh, come up with some profit tomorrow as well. So, so here today we have LGD versus NIP, and then just in pajamas, um, Thunder Talk versus OMG, um, when in the LCK we have T1 versus Sandbox and Hanwha Life versus DRX. So yeah, let's talk about the LPL matchups first. Um, I did some research before I started this video. I will share them, my notes. Um, I see the LGD right here is an underdog. Um, and Ninjas in Pajamas is a favorite. And I get it. Like LGD has been really bad and they've lost a lot of games. But their metrics are not that far off from NIPs actually, as you can see, like the jungle control percentage, lane control percentage, they actually favor LNG, L LGD. So that tells me that this matchup is actually going to be closer than most people think and compared to what Vegas thinks um, of this matchup. So I think it's a really great spot to take L LGD um, as an underdog, like uh, if you are like a straight up better, um, to bet on underdogs, I think LGD is in a good spot. Maybe even take a map or two. Um, but in terms of DFS for daily fantasy sports, yeah, I mean, I think I'm gonna have to go with NIP as a clear favorite here. But like I said, I think it's a good good place to take a shot with LGD pieces today in this matchup. And I only say that because, like I said, LGD's metrics are pretty good comparatively compared to NIPs. Even the individual junglers, respectively, um, there was only minimal difference between uh, NIPs jungler and Mede uh, Meteor and XLB. So I just wanted to point that out. And also, you know, this actually has a pretty good kill upside at set at 24.5 total kills over under. And then combined kills per minute of 0.78 on average between these two teams where NIP plays a lot faster than LGDs. So, you know, I think NIP's kill upside will be a little reduced by playing LGD who likes to play slow. But that also means if you think LGD is going to win and pull off an upset, I mean, they'll likely have a pretty good uh, kill upside as well. So. If you are playing LGD, that tells me that it's worth a shot to make that a long stack. I know they are one of the biggest, um, yeah, one of the biggest underdogs on the slate. But like I said, given the kill upside and given some metrics favoring LGD, like I said, these metrics favoring LGD do not really correlate with the, these heavy odds in favor of NIP. So um, I think it's a good spot to fade um, NIP in a multi-entry GPP contest, if you are interested in that. Um, so yeah, like I said, the match prediction, I said it's it's a toss-up, I think. I mean, I think NIP should win um, just based on the eye test on, on, and also on the roster. I mean, you see XLB. I think XLB has been playing better than Meteor, um, but not by much. Like Just like the metrics uh, I just pointed out, I think XLB has been a little better than Meteor, not by much. 
And then, you know, they have that new mid laner here, Pout over Dream, who used to start for NIP. I do think they have been meshing a little better together between XLB and Pout, the jungle mid synergy. Um, but they're actually the true alpha for and ninjas in pajamas is Fotec in the AD carry position. Fotec's numbers are like off the charts. Um, his kill share percentage is really high for this team. So yeah, I mean, obviously you would want to include Fotec if you are building like an optimal lineup. Um, now, does that mean that's going to cause a lot of issues for LPC, who is the AD carry on the other side of the matchup for LGD? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think LPC is going to struggle against Fotec, um, to be honest with you. But I mean, does that mean they're just going to roll over LGD. Um I don't I don't know. I don't think so. I mean I feel like the metrics don't lie. And I, like I said, I'm I'm more of a data driven guy. Um so I think it's a good spot for LGD. I mean really to come off of an uh, of an up uh pull off an upset here. Um but like I said so yeah I think LGD is worth a shot today for DFS. All right the next matchup in the LPL is uh TT versus OMG um, the total kills over under is actually has this is the highest among the four games on the slate, uh, set at twenty five point five, um, and then the combined kills per minute is set at 0.74, where OMG plays a little bit faster than Thunder Talk on average. Um, but yeah, I mean, so it's it's very interesting though, because like the the maybe Vegas knows something that I don't, because you know combined kills per minute is set at 0.74. And I think this should be a closer match just based on the odds, right? Like, I think that should increase the odds of um, having higher kill upside. But, you know, like with the higher combined kills per minute here for the LGD NIP game here, like you would think their kills over under would be higher. So I don't know. Maybe there's something. But so, like I said, I mean, that tells me that any of these two LPL games has the upside to be able to be able to produce the most kills in a game in a, in a series like this so i mean that these are definitely worth a shot to take on but at the end of the day i was looking at the metrics i see that thunder talk has a lot of metrics that favor them compared to omg omg has a little bit of advantage in the lane control percentage here i'll kind of show you the individual rosters here respectively but um thunder talk just overwhelmingly have um, a lot of metrics that favor them and by a significant amount too. Like you see the jungle control percentage at, I think Beichuan um, is, is that has definitely been the better jungler compared to Aki. I feel like OMG's laning phase, like I said, I mean, I, this tells me too, like I agree with these, uh, the metrics um, just based on my eye test as well. I do think like Huan Feng and Yao Yao actually have not been that great in the bottom lane. Um, I, I do think Abel and PP God should win that lane, but UCAL actually has been pretty decent, and I think he will do okay against Cream. And then Hoya, you saw how Hoya performed. I mean, <laughs> botting the shy for Weibo Gaming. Um, I think Thunder Talk coming off of that big win, huge win over Weibo Gaming. I think they're going to be full of confidence, and I think um, that will favor them quite a bit. Beichuan was amazing in that matchup, in that series, in the whole series against Weibo Gaming. I think he's going to give a lot of trouble for Aki um, here for OMG. So I am, I'm actually confident, as you can see on my match prediction, that Thunder Talk is going to win. Um, I do think, like I said, I'm a little concerned about the bottom lane here. But like I said, I think UCAL being in good form and Beichuan in good form and then Hoya in good form, I think the top half of this map for Thunder Talk will be able to make up for maybe the difference between Huan Feng versus Abel in the bottom lane. So I do like Thunder Talk here quite a bit today. Um, I think Thunder Talk is going to be like my LNG from this morning where I'm going to have a firm stance on Thunder Talk and have a lot of Thunder Talk tonight. Um, so hopefully that pays off. So yeah, there's that. And the LCK, it's it's more of a straightforward matchup, in my opinion. I think T1 should win this matchup against Sandbox. Um, the total kills over under is set at 21.5 and CKPM at 0.66. So obviously those are much, much lower and slower. 
uh, what 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 is projected to be much slower matchup and lower kill upside compared to those two uh, LPL matchups that we just talked about. And then um, you see that T1 has a lot of metrics that favor them quite a, by quite a bit. Um, I do think Sandbox, I do know that Sandbox is coming off of like a two game winning streak. Um, they're hot. Um, they're playing pretty well. But T1 also has been playing pretty well, and they've been the best team in the LCK, if not in the world out there right now. Um, I do think um, that Sandbox being on a winning streak like that actually will help T1 to stay focused and not be a, in a letdown spot. Um, I think people were talking about this uh, yesterday on the media, I think on the LCK uh, broadcast uh, when I was watching them. They were talking about how T1's uh, AD Carey and the uh, jungler, I think Guma Yushi and owner, you know, have joked a lot about like Faker and also like standing in the mid in the middle of the line when they were like bowing, doing the goodbyes after after their games, last games and stuff like that. They were joking about it. They were just talking about how their team mood is so good, and they were going over to Faker's house the other day and blah blah blah. So I think T1 is a really in a really good spot right now. Uh, their mood level is really good. Um, I do think they're they've been playing really well as a team. Um, I think Sandbox, really, they are a good team fighting team. So they always have a chance to take a map or two in the series. But I, I just feel like T1 is a better version of Sandbox, in my opinion. At least they've been so far, especially in team fights. Like, I really love the fact that Faker has taken more of a um, leadership role and more of like an assassin role for T1 and participating in a lot more team fights and getting a lot more kills. Uh, compared to what he did last year, I think he just like stepping up a little more in terms of like, you know, putting his name on the paper, so to speak. So I, I, I like T1 here today and the matchups. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think owner has been really good, um, I think, versus Willer. But Willer has been OK, um, but I think owner still has been playing a be as a better jungler compared to Willer. And you see that that's reflected in the metrics that I just pointed out for war jungle control percentage and the earned gold per minute difference between owner and uh, Willer. So I like owner quite a bit. And I, like I said, I think closer is such an aggressive mid laner. I think he is the really the engine. He's the engine for sandbox. To, I think when closer plays really well and when he racks up like five kills at the 15 or 20 minute mark, that's really how the sandbox likes to play through and win. I mean, and when closer like loses early game and tilts, I think the whole mood for sandbox has been so bad. I like I watch a lot of LCK, but closer is really has been the engine for sandbox over the last couple of years, and I just feel like it's hard to do against T1 when Faker's there, experienced veteran in the mid lane and i just feel like um, guma yushio has also been playing out of out of out of the world right now in good form uh going up against envy and kale that the bottom lane for t1 should win that matchup the next lck matchup is the hle versus drx drx has been one of the worst teams along with nongshim red force um I do think Hanwha Life struggled a lot in the first couple of weeks, but now they've bounced back, especially Clid um, at jungle has been a little better. Um, he has proved me wrong the last couple of weeks. I do think his style of play um, does not really fit the meta at the moment. Um, he's a little more passive than I think, you know, most junglers in the uh, most elite junglers in the meta are. I think he's trying to be more of that, um, and he's been playing better with the help of Zika and Viper playing well as well, kind of like easing his pressure to carry and stuff like that. I think he's been more of a utility uh, jungler where he um, likes to kind of like, you know, put a lot of pressure around the, around the uh, mid lane and the bottom lane. And Kingen has been on his own, but I'm not too worried about that, so... You see all the metrics are favoring HLE jungle control percentage and lane control percentage and gold uh, spend per minute uh, uh, difference and, you know, earn gold per minute. They all favor HLE by a lot, actually. Um, so I just feel like HLE should win here. Um, DRX, I think if they were to have a chance, um, it's not going to be on the backs of Croco. Croco has been really bad. 
I just feel like that's just going to be such an outmatch for in favor of Clid. I think the only chance that DRX has is through Fate in the mid lane and then maybe the top lane in Rascal. Because I know Viper and Life ain't losing to Duck Dumb and Barrel, and Zika is probably not losing to Fate. So I think that those are a wash. And Jungle, like I said, you you so you heard you already heard what I said about the junglers there. Um, so maybe the top lane. So I mean, like I said, so I think the win conditions for DRX are very very limited. Um, so that t- that tells me that HLE and especially in a best of five series like this. <laughs> HLE should win, should be able to win two to zero in my opinion. But this this is projected to be the slowest and lowest kills uh, upside here in this matchup between HLE and DRX. So you could fade this matchup completely if you wanted to, or just play one of these teams in the team slot to be a little different in your construction. So that's my recommendation for that. But yeah, otherwise, yeah, I mean, I hope you enjoyed the video. That's all I got for you guys. Um, if you like the video, please, please hit the like button below. Um, subscribe to our channel if you can. Uh, and then, yeah, and then also follow me at DFS Chan, DFS underscore Chan on Twitter. Um, if you guys have any questions or want to just chat league or just talk about roster builds and stuff like that, uh, feel free to reach out at DFS underscore Chan. Have a good one. Bye-bye.